So I'm going to be talking about joint work with Ricardo San Felice about the effects of a class of delays on stability properties of hybrid systems. The primary motivation for this work comes from cyber physical systems where we can have delays due to uh, communicational, communication constraints or computational issues. The running example that I'll be relying on through this presentation is a sample data controller pictured here. We have a continuous time plant along with a sampler, a zero order hold device, and our control algorithm. Ignoring the possible delays which might occur at any of these interconnections, we can describe the closed loop as a hybrid system, which I'll formalize later. Uh, for now, let's focus on the dynamics. We have three state components, uh, a state component C, which corresponds to the plant state, um, a timer variable, tau, uh, tau of S, which regulates the sampling, and uh, finally, a zero order hold state U, which corresponds to our input to the analog plant. So in between samples, when the timer variable, the sampling timer belongs to this interval with TS representing the sampling period, the timer is gonna count down with a constant rate while the zero order hold input U is gonna stay constant and the plant state evolves according to the linear differential equation AZ plus BU. Once the timer hits zero, it's gonna get updated to TS the plant state Z is going to stay constant, and the input U is going to get updated to KZ. And we'll be studying the case where the control update taking U to KZ will be delayed. And before I move on, I should also mention that we parameterize the solutions to the system by two independent variables, a time variable T and the jump index J. So an interesting feature of the sample data system is that it's robust to a wide class of perturbations. Let's suppose that our controller gain K stabilizes our continuous time plant uh, AZ plus BU when implementing with a, implemented with a sampling period of TS. In hybrid systems terms, this is equivalent to the set A given here to be asymptotically stable. We require this notion of set stability to account for the sampling timer um, since it does not converge to an equilibrium and instead undergoes periodic motion. Now, regularity of the closed loop system affords its robustness with respect to uh, not only the usual suspects like disturbance and noise, but also temporal perturbations, uh, such as uncertainties on the sampling time. We do this by considering a parametric model H delta, where delta is a scalar representing uncertainty on the sampling time. So instead of updating the timer to TS at every sample, we will now allow it to go to a delta neighborhood of TS in a random fashion, described by this difference inclusion. So as an example, let's suppose that our sampling timer TS is nominally equal to one, and if we pick our parameter delta to be 0.25, the timer might evolve like this, so that the time between consecutive samples, as you can see, is no longer constant. With this formulation, existing robustness results allow us to see that given any initial condition and any acceptable error level epsilon, there's a delta that we can tolerate in the sense that solutions of H delta will converge to an epsilon neighborhood of our set A. So here, beta is a class KL function uh, representing, uh, which allows us to characterize uniform asymptotic stability. So the driving question for this research is whether we can find analogs of this result for the case of delays. Let's go back to basics and look at what I mean by hybrid system, as promised. In plain words, we define a hybrid system by a combination of constraints, differential, and difference inclusions. We use inclusions for a variety of reasons, one of these being that they arise naturally uh, with perturbations, as we just saw for the sample data controller. Um, it's a fairly general framework and allows us to capture a wide variety of hybrid-like phenomena. 
And interestingly, you can embed purely continuous or discrete time systems in this framework simply by taking the flow set C or the jump set D to be empty. As I mentioned, uh, we use two independent variables, uh, time variable T and the jump variable J. And associated with each solution is a domain of this form. You'd notice that the jump times T1, T2 over here uh, have a non-strict inequality. So these can be equal. So for the sake of the argument, let's say that T1 is equal to T2 and T1 is positive. Then a solution with this domain would flow until time T1 and then jump. And then since T1 is equal to T2, we have a trivial interval over here. So it would jump immediately again. So pictorially, this is how a solution might look like. We start at the flow set C, where the continuous dynamics are active. So we flow until we hit the jump set, at which point we jump. And then we continue to flow until arriving at the intersection of the flow and jump sets. Now the solution has an option here. It can flow or jump. So you add in additional non-uniqueness due to this intersection. In this picture, the, continue, uh, the solution continues to flow until jumping, and then it flows, and then it undergoes two consecutive jumps before flowing again. Graphically, this is how our solution could look like. We start at our initial condition and flow until time t1, which is equal to uh, the time t2. So we have two consecutive jumps. And the solution flows again until time three, and then it jumps again, and then it flows, and so on and so forth. Now, in terms of the prior literature, of course, there's a huge body of work on delay systems, but surprisingly not so much in the case of hybrid dynamics. I've listed a few over here, and these works are close in spirit to their continuous time counterparts. They explicitly model delays and use infinite dimensional analysis. I should mention at this point that some of this work is specialized to specific hybrid models like uh, switching systems. But we do have some uh, recent work, pretty valuable, by Jun Liu and Andy Thiel, extending the hybrid inclusions framework that I just presented to the infinite dimensional case. Now, our results, on the other hand, rely specifically on finite dimensional analysis. Uh, this has the advantage of simplicity in terms of, uh, from a mathematical standpoint, uh, but also it enables us to uh, use conditions that we regularly use for robustness to a general class of perturbations. And they hold for time varying delays with no dwell time constraints. And by that, I mean that they hold for systems with potentially Zeno solutions. All right, so going back to our problem, to model delays in a finite dimensional framework, we will introduce two additional states and construct a model parametrized uh, by the maximum duration of delays denoted T. The two additional states are delay time or tau, regulating the duration of delays, and the memory state mu, which will play a role similar to the zero order hold. This approach has been previously used in network control, but we extend it to general hybrid systems. Uh, but for now, let's focus on the sample data controller. Uh, with our new formulation, the continuous dynamics of the original states do not change. Um, however, for the new states, the timer tau, when it has a value of minus one, it stays constant. Uh, and the reason for that is that the value of minus one implies that there is no active delay. And when the timer is in this interval uh, between zero and T, it's gonna count down with a constant rate, okay? And the memory state mu being a memory state and playing a role similar to zero order hold is gonna stay constant. For the discrete dynamics, we'll make some minor changes. Before we updated U at sample times according to the control law, now we will keep you constant, we won't change it, and instead record the new control input KZ in our memory state mu. And we'll also update the delay timer to a random value between zero and T. Once the delay expires, we will take this recorded value KZ, uh, we'll, we'll take this recorded value KZ from the memory state mu, and finally update the zero order hold input U. 
Okay, so we have two main assumptions. The first one is that the original nominal system has a pre-asymptotically stable compact set A. The prefix pre uh, over here indicates that maximal solutions to our system need not be complete, which is in accordance with stability theory for hybrid inclusions. And other than that, this is stability in the usual Lyapunov sense. So if we start close to our set A of interest, we should stay close. And if we start close enough, we should converge back to it. Um, OK, uh, our second, our second uh, assumption is a set of mild regularity conditions, which we call hybrid basic conditions. These require the flow and jump sets to be closed and the flow and jumps maps to be what we call outer semi-continuous and locally bounded. But this simplifies to continuity for the single valued case. Okay. So going back to the parametric model, when we look at the case of T0, the dynamics simplify a little bit so we can get rid of these inclusions. But the thing to note is that in this case, at the sampling time, the delay timer gets updated to zero. So the system undergoes a second jump such that the value kz, which was recorded in the memory state, immediately gets mapped back to the zero order whole state u. So in this sense, there's an almost one-to-one -one relationship between solutions of this model uh, and solutions of the original sample data system. So for the case of t is equal to zero, hat h of zero turns out to be a redundant representation of h. And using this property, you can also uh, deduce that hat h of zero inherits asymptotic stability properties of h in some sense. And finally, um, for any delay parameter t, this higher dimensional parametric model satisfies our regularity properties. But this leads to our main result, which says that the delayed model is, in plain words, semi-globally and practically stable with respect to the duration of delays. And more formally, for any compact ses, set S in the Bayesian attraction of A and any positive epsilon, there is a positive T such that solutions of the delayed system converge to an epsilon neighborhood of our set of interest. I want to reemphasize that this result holds for time varying delays and uh, for a wide class of hybrid like phenomena, and also systems possessing uh, Zeno behavior. The main message is that asymptotic stability, or pre asymptotic stability, if you want to be exact, uh, combined with hybrid basic conditions lead to practical robustness. So, this holds for what we might call digital delays but also for interconnected systems where agents might be slow to react to each other. It's also connected to temporal regularization of Zeno systems. And also on a philosophical level, we also use hybrid modeling for systems with drastically different time scales. Um, an example being mechanical system with impacts where the duration of impact is normally non-zero, but we model them to be immediate using hybrid dynamics. So in that sense, you can see that there's a nice continuous dependency between impact durations and the precision of your model. So in the rest of the talk, I wanna focus on two applications. The first is a state estimator for a linear systems, which uses intermittent samples. Uh, we assume a positive lower and upper bounds on the duration between consecutive transmissions. Uh, so sampling might possibly occur over an unreliable network. And the observer problem is to design a, gain, design a gain matrix L such that the state of this impulsive observer converges to the planned state Z. Now, defining the estimation error in the usual sense, we can transform this problem into a hybrid inclusion form, similar to the sample data system and then guarantee asymptotic stability by the following parametric LMI. It is a difficult problem, but you can address it with a polytopic embedding, polytopic embedding technique uh, detailed in the paper by Francesco Ferrante. So we considered a simulation, one of the simulation scenarios in this paper um, 
where we have a mass spring damper interconnection with bias measurements described by the following matrices. Uh, and we added some delays into it. So the lower bounds on the sampling period is 0.2, and we chose a delay parameter of uh, 0.15, which is rather high. But all in all, um, despite the loss of some monotonic behavior in the response, which is expected due to the time varying and random delays, the estimation error converges to a neighborhood of zero and possibly to zero itself. The second example, application example, is a boost converter, a power system which steps up uh, the input voltage V to a desired value by rapidly closing and opening the switch Q over here, often actuated by a transistor. So this is a differential algebraic system. It's a switching system with four modes. But once you close the loop with a CLF-like quantity, it can be reduced to a two-mode system with a differential inclusion. The thing to note about this uh, model is that the desired output voltage is not an equilibrium point of either mode. So stabilization requires concurrent switching, in other words, Zeno behavior. This leads to some problems with the simulations, namely that the simulations can terminate prematurely on the time axis. Um, however, with the addition of some random delays, you know, over here we added delays of up to five milliseconds, um, you can regularize the system, leading to dramatic improvements in your simulation. The price to pay for this is a tracking error, but you could argue that this is an acceptable error and would occur in practice anyway, because you cannot have concurrent switching, physically speaking. Um, and if you look at the trajectories on the phase plane for the delayed and delayed and for the delayed and undelayed response, they look reasonably similar. We also study this regularization effect by running simulations with varying levels of T. And as expected, the switching frequency is inversely proportional to the delay length. What is perhaps more surprising is that the resulting practical error epsilon um, depends continuously on T, as we proved. But in the case of the converter, um, numerically, we can see that more strongly it depends linearly on T. So quite cool. OK, so to conclude, my, the main message of this talk is that asymptotic stability or pre-asymptotic stability uh, is robust with respect to delays when the system is regular. Our result calls for time-varying delays due to computational issues, communication constraints, or uh, delays arising from interconnections. And they hold for Zeno solutions, so we don't have any dual time constraints. And importantly, it gives formal guarantees for controllers designed in a delay-free setting and justifies the hybrid systems formalism from a mathematical standpoint. We're currently looking at conditions guaranteeing preservation of asymptotic stability with delays and also trying to extend the delay model to the case of multiple delays. So we're looking at more complex delay scenarios. Um, before concluding, I would like to I would like to thank our sponsors and thank you for listening. <laughs>